Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 of the Skull series. If you still haven't watched part 1 and part 2, I would request you to please go and watch both the parts before you begin with this third part. This is the frontal view of the skull or also known as Norma Frontalis in Latin. It has roughly an oval outline and is wider above than below. The way that I'll approach the frontal view, it is divided into four parts. The frontal part, this is the frontal region of the skull. Then the second part will be the orbital openings. This is the orbital openings. And then the third part is the bony aperture of the nose. This is the bony aperture of the nose. And then the last and the fourth part will be the lower part of the skull. This will be the lower part of the skull. That will be the maxilla and the mandible. So starting on with the frontal region. The frontal bone, this is the frontal bone. And this forms the forehead of the skull. Its upper part is smooth and it is convex. As you can see, this is convex. And this is also known as the squamous part of the frontal bone. This is the squamous part of the frontal bone. The frontal bone also has a nasal part. This is the nasal part of the skull, right here. I'll explain it in a few minutes. And this is the zygomatic process of the bone. This one right here is the zygomatic process of the frontal bone. While this region, this one, similarly on the other side, here, this is the orbital part of the frontal bone. So, moving ahead. This bony elevated portion on the frontal bone, as you can see right here, right above and medially to the orbit. These elevated portions, they are presented medially to the orbit and they are known as the superciliary arcs. These are the superciliary arcs. These superciliary arcs, they overlie the frontal sinus and they are better marked in males than in females. The point where these arcs, they meet, that is right here. As you can see, these arcs, they are meeting right here in the center and this point is known as glabella. This is the glabella of the skull. Below the glabella, you can see that the frontal bone, it is going inwards, it recedes and it moves downwards. So right here, this part is known as the nasal part of the frontal bone and the point where the frontal bone, where it meets the nasal bone, it is known as the frontonasal suture. This line, if you can see it right here, this is the frontonasal suture. I'll just zoom in a bit. It is right here. This line. Where the frontal bone, it is meeting the nasal bone. Here is a suture and it is known as the frontonasal suture. Moving on to the next part, as you can see, this is the nasal bone and there are two parts to the nasal bone and these two nasal bones, they are interconnected by this suture in the middle and it is known as the internasal suture. This is the internasal suture. Now the point where the internasal suture, it meets the frontonasal suture, that would be right here in the middle. This is the internasal suture meeting the frontonasal suture at this point and it is known as the nasion. This is the nasion. Also there is one more point regarding the frontal bone. As you can see right here. These were the superciliary arcs and right above the superciliary arcs there is frontal eminence. It is a low and rounded portion right above the superciliary arcs. 
it is slightly circular here and it is known as the frontal eminence it is much more prominent in females than in males i'm sure this is a skull of a male that's why the frontal eminence is not very prominent but anyways let's move on so the next part is the orbital opening we are moving on to the orbital opening of the skull these are the orbits that accumulate or hold the eyes in position so each orbital opening it is quadrangular in shape and is bounded by four margins each orbit is bounded by four margins this is the supraorbital margin and right above the supraorbital margin medial to the orbit this foramen right here similarly on the other side this is the supraorbital margin and right above the supraorbital margin at the medial side we can see this foramina and it is known as the supraorbital foramen this is known as the supraorbital foramen or the supraorbital notch this supraorbital foramen it transmits the supraorbital nerves and the blood vessels the next margin that we are going to talk about is the infraorbital margin this is the infraorbital margin similarly on this side this is the infraorbital margin of the skull this infraorbital margin it is formed by the zygomatic bone laterally right here this is the zygomatic bone this one right here this is the zygomatic bone and this is the maxilla as you can see this portion it is the maxilla so the infraorbital margin it is formed laterally by the zygomatic bone this is the zygomatic bone forming the margin laterally and on the medial surface this margin is it is formed by the maxilla this bone it is maxilla and it moves all the way up here this is the maxilla well actually this is the frontal process of the maxilla maxilla nasal bone and the frontal bone so the infraorbital margin it is formed by the zygomatic bone laterally and maxilla medially similarly on this side this is the maxilla this is the zygomatic bone laterally the infraorbital margin is formed by the zygomatic bone and medially it is formed by the maxilla now we are moving on to the medial orbital margin this is the medial margin or the medial orbital margin and it is formed by the frontal bone above this is the frontal bone and the frontal process of the maxillary bone just to make it clear this is the medial margin and this medial margin it is formed by the frontal bone this is the frontal bone up till here and this is the frontal process of the maxilla this is the lateral margin of the orbit and it is formed by the frontal process of the zygomatic bone this is the zygomatic bone and right here is the frontal process of the zygomatic bone I'll give you a bit closer look so this is our zygomatic bone and right here at this point is a suture this suture it is known as the frontal zygomatic suture as the name suggests frontal zygomatic frontal bone zygomatic bone they are meeting here at this point and this is known as the frontal zygomatic suture so the lateral margin of the orbit it is formed by the frontal process of the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic process of the frontal bone once again the frontal process of the zygomatic bone this is the zygomatic bone and the part of the zygomatic bone that meets the frontal bone is known as the frontal process of zygomatic bone similarly this is the frontal bone and the frontal bone 
or the part of the frontal bone that meets the zygomatic bone it is known as the zygomatic process of frontal bone so these were the four margins of the orbit and now we are moving on this is the bony aperture of the nose as you can clearly see this part right here this is the bony aperture of the nose now this aperture it is formed above right here by the lower border of the nasal bones this is actually the lower border of the nose and below this aperture it is formed by the nasal notch this is the nasal notch right here there are two nasal notches on the right and on the left these are the nasal notch and these portions they form the bony aperture of the nose there are some articulations of the nasal bone anteriorly the nasal bones they articulate with each other these nasal bones they are two nasal bones and they are meeting anteriorly with each other at this joint or suture that is known as the internasal suture posteriorly the nasal bones they articulate with the frontal process of the maxilla now as described earlier this is the maxilla it starts right here as you can see this bone up till here right here similarly on the other side this is maxilla I'm showing you the boundaries of the maxilla up till here this is the nasal bone while this is the maxilla and this is the frontal process of maxilla so posteriorly the nasal bones they are articulating with the frontal process of the maxilla now superiorly these nasal bones they articulate with the frontal bone at the frontal nasal suture this is the frontal nasal suture and inferiorly these nasal bones they articulate with the upper nasal cartilage that is attached to it the sharp projection that you see right here this one it is known as the anterior nasal spine I'll give you a closer look this one right here this is a projection and it is known as the anterior nasal spine also the lowermost point on the internasal suture once again this was the internasal suture and the lowest point would be right here this is known as the rhinion there's one more point about the nasal bone that is the nasal bone is the most easily fractured bone so next time when you get into a fight make sure you punch the person right here on the nasal bone so that you knock him out for good now we're moving on to the lower part of the face the lower part of the face contains maxilla the zygomatic bone and the mandible this is the maxilla I'll show you the boundaries of the maxilla it starts from here and it is going on up to here coming back here this is actually one maxilla so we have two maxilla one on the right side and one on the left side the maxilla it contributes a large share in the formation of the facial skeleton and the anterior surface this is the anterior surface of the body of the maxilla it has a nasal notch medially so each maxilla it has a nasal notch they also have the anterior nasal spine this is the anterior nasal spine as I mentioned earlier also the foramen that you see that is inferior to the infraorbital margin similarly this side there are two foramen right below the infraorbital margin and they are present on the body of the maxilla they are the infra orbital foramen and they transmit the infraorbital nerves and blood vessels the depression that you see right here there is a certain depression right here and this is known as the canine fossa in addition to these points the maxilla also has four processes 
Now on this anterior view, we can identify three out of the four processes. The first process being the frontal process of the maxilla. So this is the maxilla. The frontal process of the maxilla will be the one that is articulating with the frontal bone. So this is the part of the maxilla that is going to articulate with the frontal bone. And this portion right here, similarly on this side, this part this is known as the frontal process of the maxilla the next process is the zygomatic process of the maxilla it is short but stout and it articulates with the zygomatic bone so this part right here as you can see that this is the zygomatic bone and this part right here similarly this part on this maxilla this is known as the zygomatic process of maxilla. Moving on to the next process and that is the alveolar process and it bears sockets for the upper teeth that would be this part. This is the alveolar process of the maxilla as you can see these are the upper teeth and they are fit into the alveolar process of the maxilla. So that was the maxilla now we're moving on to the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone, it forms the prominence of the cheek, also known as the cheekbone. If we view the bone anteriorly, this was the maxilla, finishing up here at the zygomatic process of the maxilla. The bone that starts right next to it, or the bone lateral to it, is known as the zygomatic bone. Similarly right here, this is the zygomatic bone. I'll show you a bit closely and as you can see here is the part where maxilla finishes off and this one right here up till this point this is the zygomatic bone. Similarly on this side this bone right here it is the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic bone it has a foramen that is known as zygomaticofacial foramen. I'll help you identify the foramen. This is a foramen on the zygomatic bone. Similarly, we have a foramen this side. It's not easily visible in the video, but it's much more easily visible right here. This foramen right here it is known as the zygomatico facial foramen and this foramen it transmits the nerve of the same name that is the zygomatico facial nerve it also transmits a branch of the maxillary nerve now we're moving on to the next bone and that is the mandible the mandible this one right here it forms the lower jaw of the skull the upper border or the alveolar arc it lodges the lower teeth from the anterior view we can see that this is the upper border of the mandible this would be the lower border of the mandible and this is the upper border of the mandible so the mandible has an upper border and a lower border the upper border also known as the alveolar arc it lodges the lower teeth of the skull the medial point on the base is known as the mental point from the anterior view we can see that this is the angle of the mandible well i'll show you a bit laterally as well this is the angle of the mandible and the point on the angle of the mandible it is known as gonion now we're moving on to the anterior surface of the body of the mandible this part right here before the angle this is known as the body of the mandible. The ramus of the mandible, that is this part, I'll discuss this part in the lateral view of the skull, that will be the next video. Right now we are going to discuss the body of the mandible. So right here in the body of the mandible, this part here, where the mandible fuses, in the middle it is known as symphysis menti. This is symphysis menti and right below it there is a triangular portion and this is very prominent this portion is known as the mental 
protuberance and now we are moving on to the mental tubercles just laterally to the mental prominence these are the mental tubercles these are the mental tubercles of the mandible and laterally on the mandible we can see these two foramen these are the mental foramen and they transmit the mental nerve and blood vessels also the lines right here on the mandible you can see these lines that are coming down here to the mental tubercles similarly on this side they are coming on from the ramus towards the tubercles and these lines they are known as the oblique lines of the mandible these are the oblique lines of the mandible now i'm going to show you all the sutures that we can identify from the anterior view first of all as i described earlier the first suture was the internasal suture this one right here that connects the nasal bones this is the internasal suture right above the internasal suture we have the frontonasal suture this is the frontonasal suture that connects the frontal bone and the nasal bones the next suture that we are going to identify is the nasomaxillary suture this is the maxillary bone similarly on the other side this is the maxilla and this maxilla it is articulating with the nasal bone right at this point I hope it's visible similarly this side this is the maxilla that is articulating with the nasal bone right here so this is the nasomaxillary suture the next suture that we are going to identify is the lacrimal maxillary suture this right here internally is the lacrimal crest i'll define the lacrimal bone when i describe the internal skull so this is the lacrimal bone right here and the joint that separates the maxilla from the lacrimal bone it is known as the lacrimal maxillary suture this is the maxilla and right here there is a suture coming in right here this is the lacrimal maxillary suture the next suture that we are going to identify is the fronto maxillary suture as you remember this is the fronto nasal suture and this ends right here at the nasal maxillary suture right lateral to it similarly on this side this was the fronto nasal suture as it ends here this suture that separates the frontal bone from the maxilla is known as the fronto maxillary suture the next suture is the intermaxillary suture as the name suggests that the two maxillae they are connecting right here they are interconnecting here and this is the intermaxillary suture that connects the two maxillae right this one the next suture is known as the zygomatical maxillary suture as the name suggests this is the zygomatic bone this is the maxillary bone and the suture that joins both of them is known as zygomatical maxillary suture similarly this side this is the zygomatic bone this is the maxilla and this suture is known as zygomatical maxillary suture the last suture that is present here on the anterior view is known as the zygomatical frontal suture this is the zygomatic bone this is the frontal bone and they connect right here see it it is right here where the zygomatic bone it meets the frontal bone I'll show you here as well if it's much clearer yeah this one here is a suture that connects the frontal bone with the zygomatic bone this is the zygomatic frontal suture so these were the sutures right here so that was all regarding the anatomy of the anterior view of the skull if you like the video do give the video a thumbs up and if you still haven't subscribed to the channel do hit the subscribe button below so you do not miss out on the later videos have a good day